So now what I'm going to do is, so we've got subtools here. We've got the food subtools, and we've also got the Pac-Man subtools. So I'm going to hold down Alt and tap Pac-Man, which again is the, it's the exact same thing as me going over here and tapping the subtool menu. And I'm going to hide the visibility on this food subtool by clicking that eyeball off. And with this Pac-Man selected, I'm going to hit, I'm already in um, X symmetry mode. I'm going to go over here to geometry, turn on Dynamesh, blur off, project off, resolution 128 is fine, hit Dynamesh. And now what I can do is let's go ahead and start talking about uh, clipping. I'm also going to go to preferences, edit, turn off the line cursor to service. So we got MacCap Gray, and we've got our clay brush, and we've already discussed how you can kind of make your character however you want and turn off lazy mouse if you want to do nice you know fine tune dot type stuff uh, so let's talk about the clip brush clip brush is a little bit different than visibility so visibility is basically control shift and drag and it'll isolate that uh, visibility and it's kind of like a mask as well if you control shift and isolate this and then you do a for example deformation inflate you can inflate what's visible here and then when you bring everything back, it acts like it was masked. So let's do that with a mask here. You can also mask, oops, let's do mask pin. Drag a rectangle back here, control click to invert that mask, do an inflate, and it'll just inflate that geometry out. So visibility also acts as a kind of masking as well. Uh, but if you hold down control shift, let's make our way through here. Uh, you'll get to the clip ones. So we started with select rect and select lasso because that's kind of what the default was. Uh, but we're going to go all the way back over here and start talking about the clipping stuff. And I'm actually going to start with clip curve because this is the one I use the most often. So I'm going to hold down control shift and tap clip curve. And just like when you're in masking, if you go B, C, you can see all your clip brushes in here. So if you want to change this light clip circle, you can select it and I'll say, okay, next time you hold down control shift, it'll be clip circle and I'll say, okay, you can skip this note till the next time restart. So now when I hit control shift, it'll be clip circle. So that's one way to do it. Or you can hold down control shift and then just go grab it. So I tend to do that. So control shift, clip curve. Now, just like when we were doing the masking mask curve, you can drag out a curve line. You can tap alt once to kind of do a bezier curve. You can tap alt twice to do a sharp line. And then where that gradient was, so when that gradient is pointing from the line straight out, everything above that line where the gradient's pointing to will be masked. Same thing with the clip brush. Hold down control shift, we've got clip curve selected. Um, if we hold down control shift and drag out a line, we can drag out a line. Um, we can also use, sorry, space bar to move that around. And if you let go of, sh if you hold down shift, like as you, you held down control shift to drag out the line, but you don't have to have shift held down while you're using it, you can go ahead and let go and so it won't snap to an angle. Uh, and it'll still maintain its clip curve. Now, if we hit alt once, we get a bezier curve. We hit alt twice, we can do a sharp corner. And then we let go, <gasps> okay, it clipped it. Now, that's different from trim, which we'll get to in a second. So basically what it did was, hold on, control shift, I'm just gonna drag a straight line. It basically took all of that geometry that was above here and mushed it straight back to that line, which is kind of cool and kind of misleading depending on how you wanna use this tool. So in this, in this instance, what it looks like is, I dragged a line out and there's a line with a gradient. Everything, all the geometry above that line is gonna get mushed straight back down to that line. Boom, just like that. However, if you kind of tilt your camera above, you're going to see that it literally did just that. It took all the geometry up here, turn on polyframe, and it mushed it down to that flat line, which basically means you have a paper thin line right here. Not ideal. So that's kind of an edge case, which I would use another tool for. Uh, but just keep in mind that that's something you might have to deal with. And in which case, if you just if you did want to use clip curve, you can actually drag that out. And then because you know it's going to mush it straight back to that line, you can also use another clip curve along there to kind of mush it back to that line a little bit. And the reason you want to get rid of that is because if you have a paper thin mesh and then you redyna mesh, you're going to get a kind of a nasty paper thin. And sometimes there'll be holes in here. So it's not ideal. You, you really don't want paper thin meshes when you're dealing with DynaMesh and stuff. Uh, where Clip Curve will work great is on like the back of his head, let's say. So we hold down Control Shift and then hold down Alt and just take a big chunk out of him. So he's got a nice, like a fish mouth back here. It took all that geometry and just clipped it back. 